Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we're going to do another list talking about another five uh, least favorite stories from Classic Who. Because as I mentioned in that first video, there was probably some that were just slipping my mind that should be on the list. <clears throat> and literally the first comment I read on that video mentioned one. I was like, that one should have been on the list. I'm going to have to do another video. And there was a few others I saw people mentioning. I was just like gonna have to do another video so we're gonna talk about five more stories from classic who that are just kind of my least favorites not that they're necessarily bad they're just not great so some of these I don't hate these five they're just well they're on here for their, their own individual reasons It has some good things going in it. Uh, I like Brian Blessed a lot. Brian Blessed just makes anything he's in better. I just love, I love how he bellows everything. Brian Ble Blessed doesn't talk. He bellows. You fool, don't you know who I am? We will find them. <laughs> I just, I love him. He's great. Uh, it's nice to have Seal back. I like Seal as a character. I love him in Vengeance. He's a really good character, a very iconic character. Uh, it's just, and, and I like the Doctor and Perry in this, you know, their relationship, again, is much improved over season 22. It just, some of the parts are better than the whole here. Um, I don't like what happens with Perry, especially. I kind of find the story doesn't really go anywhere either. I just, I'm, I find the story uninteresting, but the ending with Perry, I don't like, with Perry getting killed. I'm actually glad they retconned that in Ultimate Foe, because I don't like it. Uh, one, Perry doesn't do much to stop him. She just, all right, they've got me strapped down. Please hurry, Doctor. And she should have been fighting and clawing. Uh, two, I hate that she not only dies, but it's like her body just gets taken over by somebody else. It's so uninteresting. The, the final scene is interesting. I just, I don't like the idea. It, it hurts Caves of Androzani. If that stands and she dies there, it completely invalidates Caves of Androzani. Because he goes through all this in Caves of Androzani to save her, to make his sacrifice worth something, to make all that he went through worth something. Completely invalidates all of that. If she dies here, well, he died for nothing. He should have let her die so he could have stayed the fifth doctor. Ha ha ha. So I feel like if she had died here like originally planned, it would have really hurt Caves of Androzani and made it less important. <clears throat> but with them retconning it with her surviving and marrying Brian Blessed's character, I feel like that saves Andr Caves of Androzani's ending. Um, but yeah, I think the ending is what really just <clears throat> pulled it from me because I didn't like the idea of Perry dying. I'm very glad they retconned it. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Come on, Scooby Doo, I see you pretending you got a shiver. I did Fury from the Deep. I have complained a million times about the animation from Fury from the Deep. You guys know I hate the animation. It looks like Scooby-Doo animation. It looks like they were going to do a Scooby-Doo Doctor Who crossover. Because Scooby-Doo has crossed over with like everything over the years at this point. They had a Supernatural episode where they met Scooby-Doo. They've had wrestling cartoons where the wrestlers meet Scooby-Doo. And then the old 70s show, they met everybody from the Globe Trotters to Batman and Robin. So at this point, Doctor Who's probably the only thing Scooby-Doo hasn't. Crossover with. So here's what I think happened. I think originally they were going to do a Doctor Who Scooby Doo crossover. And for some reason it fell through and they were like, so we're trying to do Fury from the Deep. It's going to cost so much money to animate all the assets. And somebody was like, huh. Hey, we've got those unused Scooby Doo assets for some of the characters. Eh. Because the BBC are the cheap bastards that they are. They were just like, eh. You, it works. Let's throw it in there. Well, it doesn't match the tone of Fury. These classic Who fans are suckers. They'll buy it. Trust me. What we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and give it to them now. We'll wait another five years. We'll do a special edition with with uh, 
better animation, and we'll wait another 10 years, and we'll give them the surviving episode so that we found. They know we're fools, and they're going to get our money. They're right. They do another view. They do a special edition of Fury from the Deep with totally new animation from the ground up. I'm in. And then after that, they find the surviving episodes, if they haven't already, and uh, release those. I'm in. They got me. The Daemons. This is the one that's going to get me in trouble. Now, I don't hate the Daemons. Let me be clear. It's not even a bad episode. I just don't connect with it. Maybe it's because I live in the States, so a lot of the rural village Celtic stuff going on here is just not part of my culture, so I don't connect with it the way, say, a British person would more inherently. Uh, I just don't get into this story. Uh, the whole, they beat them because Joe was willing to sacrifice herself for the doctor and this godlike creature couldn't comprehend it and so he just died is... It's no different than Craig beating the Cybermen in closing time because of his love for Alfie. It's just, it seems silly. It, it seems, it's like a, it's a very contrived ending, and it kind of lets it down. Uh, and I don't really like the main demon's dress up. I mean, the mask. It just even for classic who it looks rough. You know, you got a dude with a mask on that's obviously a mask with a bare chest that looks like he needs to exercise more. Not that I'm throwing stones, mind you. Um, but it's just not as impressive as it should be. And of course, I have issues with it, it very obviously um, being Steven's voice, who also, of course, voiced Omega. And I so clearly associate that voice with Omega that I can't separate it. So while I'm watching the story and I hear that voice, I'm just like, that's Omega. Omega's voicing that guy. Okay, I have the same problem with Hand of Fear Part 4. With the male Eldred, it's very obviously Stephen, and I just I can't separate that voice from Omega, so that's just an issue I have with it. It's not bad. I just it needs a rewatch. I really want to watch the omnibus version of it, but I can't bring myself to watch the omnibus version of it because I, I'm just so uninterested in the story that I don't want to watch it right now. Eventually, I'll get around to it, but it's it really, really eventually, methinks. <laughs> Troughton saves this one. The Dominators isn't good. I'd always heard about its bad reputation, but I figured, well, maybe it'll be like the Crotons. The Crotons doesn't have a good reputation, but I really enjoyed it when I watched it. Maybe this will be a situation like that. And then I got to that very early scene when the two Dominators land and they're talking to each other and they're not even looking at her. We must find the mission. Yes, we will. We will do that. We will find the mission. Where is the location? And they're not even looking at each other. And I'm sitting there going, ooh, ooh, and this is five episodes. I better buckle up. I have a feeling this is going to be a tough one. And then they're also really bad at the beginning of episode two when they have the doctor in their ship and they're stand against that wall. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a hard. What saves it is Troughton. Troughton's really good in it. I absolutely love Troughton in this story, which, I mean, I like Jamie and Zoe, too, especially um, especially Jamie. I really do enjoy Jamie in this one as well, but just Troughton sells it. Troughton makes it watchable. Seeing Troughton and all of his mannerisms that the animations have trouble trying to capture properly and being able to watch a story, a complete story of Troughton, just makes it worth it in and of itself. Terminus. Terminus is not a bad story. Terminus is a watchable story. Terminus is just extremely forgettable and uninteresting. Terminus, I had seen Terminus before. And when I kept thinking back on Terminus, I couldn't remember much about it. I remembered Sarah left, and I remember being it on some kind of station that... I seem to, I remembered it being a prison in my mind for some reason, which I guess in, in a way it kind of is. That's all I remembered about it. Big set, prison ship like set, Nissa leaves. That's it. That's all I remembered. And then I rewatched it, and it's not good, but it's not like a dumpster fire bad like some other stories are. It's just extremely uninteresting and very forgettable. It's like. 
it's like I think Stephen Moffat was inspired to create the silence off this story. You know, something that while you're watching it, you see it, and as soon as you look away from it, you totally forget about it. That's what inspired it, I think, with the silent voice Terminus. Because Terminus is like that. Because while you're watching Terminus, you're kind of into Terminus. Because it's not bad. But as soon as you're done watching Terminus, you completely forget about Terminus. You're like, until somebody mentions it, and you're like, Terminus, Terminus, Terminus. Yes, yes, that's part of the Black Guardian trilogy. What happens in it? <sighs> Nissa leaves. What else? <sighs> Why are you asking so many questions? It's just extremely forgettable. And that's the main reason it's on that list, is it's just... It's one of those stories you watch, like, once every ten years. Because you, you get to that point where you're like... Especially because you might want to watch the whole Black Guardian trilogy. And it's since it's in the middle, you know, you might as well just go ahead and watch it. You know, you watch Modern Undead, which I, I don't really care for either. But it's all, it's all right. It's good to see the brig back. And then you watch this because it's there. And then you get to Enlightenment. And Enlightenment's great. So I, I think it's that more than anything. Like, I'm never just sitting here going, holy crap, let's watch Terminus. Never happens. But every now and then where I'm like... Well, I'm either going to watch the Black Guardian trilogy or I'm like, what the hell happens in Terminus? Let's, let's watch that again. So then that's been my thoughts on uh, five more of my kind of least favorite stories from Classic Who. I'd like to know what you think of these stories and what you think of this video. So comment down below and let me know other things to do. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you like what I do and would like to contribute to what I do. There is a link to that down in the description below. All sorts of different tiers there to look through. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.